Welcome to the Living Well Church podcast and thanks for tuning in today. Our mission as a church is to help people find faith in Jesus and a life of purpose and hope. You're about to watch a message that will challenge you, inspire you, encourage you and most of all point you to Jesus and the life of purpose and hope he has planned for you. So lean in and enjoy and let God speak into your life. Um, so he's given me that great introduction. Uh, hopefully you'll get to know me throughout this, if that didn't give you paint on already <laughs> picture of what I'm like. Um, it's really good to see you. If you haven't been here before, welcome. It's really lovely to have you here. I know that Harry, Andy and Toby will really appreciate your support today. I'm not going to speak for long. You'll be really glad. Um, but I just want to talk to you about kind of the significance of what people have experienced in their life. I'm going to do that by strangely telling you about our new floor in our house. Now, we moved into our house, lots of you know, we bought a house and we're completely renovating the thing. So this involved us putting down this nice, lovely new floor upstairs. And after a couple of weeks moving in, I thought, gosh, I'd better clean the floor. <laughs> Again, a bit more of what, what we're like. And, um, and I thought, yeah, I better, better do that. And what was really great is as I was cleaning the floor, the floor was actually really, really, really filthy. Like it was seriously messy. Had We have a huge, huge dog. He's kind of big, bear size, this size. We have a toddler. You've heard of him this morning already. And I have a husband. Um, so you can imagine the accumulation of dirt and filth that gathers on our floor. Now, this was my biggest contention in our last house because our floor in our last house showed the dirt all the time. I was forever cleaning the floor. Literally, the dog would come through the house and be like, right, now it's time to clean the floor again. Probably cleaned it at least twice a day. But this house, a couple of weeks gone past, and I thought, that floor still looks pretty good. Johnny came home from work and I said, Johnny, you never guess what. I cleaned the floor. It was an utter mess. It was really filthy, but it didn't look messy because it's shiny and it doesn't look messy. And I thought, great, we have got a winner with this floor. <laughs> you. No one will ever know that it's actually covered in dirt. But I think maybe, <laughs> and this floor is going to become a bit of a metaphor this morning because actually our lives can be a bit like that. You know, we live in a place now, we live in a, in a lifestyle, we live in a culture where we can make our appearance really shiny. You know, we can change the filters on our phone to get the right filter to make sure that we look just right for that profile picture. We can make sure that our photographs on Instagram look really good with the right kind of background, the right kind of light. We can make sure that we dress well. Harry and I have got the same shirt on today. We obviously thought, yeah, we know how to make ourselves look shiny on an important day. And um, we can. We can pay a lot of attention to our appearance to make ourselves look shiny. But the truth is, really, we're all a bit messy. And you might think, Beth, I've never met you before, and now you're saying I'm a mess. Well, let's just look at the what the Bible says in mess. It uses the word sin. And you know what? It uses things like, <laughs> if we've lied... That's, that's, that's not great. That's a sin according to the word of God. And whether that's a little white lie, white lie, you know, telling your child that Thomas the Tank and Gin outside Tesco's is broken today, so you don't spend 10 minutes outside in the rain on Thomas the Tank and Gin, that's still a lie. Or maybe you've lied to your spouse about where you were, what you were doing, who you were talking to on the computer. Maybe you've lied to work about what you were doing, where you were. Maybe actually lies slip out of your mouth so easily. And maybe murder. And I'm sure maybe not everyone in this room has murdered by all means. I don't think that for one minute. But the Bible actually says in Matthew 5, actually, if you're angry with someone, it's like killing them off in your heart. And I hear regularly somebody say, oh, that person is dead to me. You know, we get so angry, we say they're dead for me. It's almost like we've killed them off. That's a bit of mess in our lives. And some of us have relationship and relationship that we've burnt through, and we're still angry, and we're still bitter at those people. 
and we just burn them off. They're dead to us. It's like we've killed them off in our heart. That's a bit of mess we add onto our floor. How about adultery? And again, some of you actually might have been adulterous in your life. I don't know. But the Bible actually says if you've looked in Matthew 5, if you've even looked at another man or woman in that luring way, that's considered as adultery. How many times have you watched a film, turned on a music video, walked down the street and thought, Ooh. according to the word of God, that's adultery. That's another bit of mess that we put into our lives. So let's be honest here. I'm sure most of us in, our, in this room, in some stage or another, could actually say, yeah, I've, I've been a bit adulterous or I've lied or I've actually murdered in terms of crossing out somebody in my heart. And they are the crumbs on our floor. They're the dog hair on the floor. They're the muddy footprints on the floor. And actually, when we look at it, we can make ourselves look as shiny and lovely and new as we like, but we are a bit of a mess. But I want to tell you some news this morning. And I'm sure that the people getting baptized this morning will tell you a little bit, maybe about how their lives were a little bit messy, but they're going to tell you about what God has done. And in Romans 5, it says this. It says, so I'm just trying to find what the right verse is. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And do you know what I really love? is that Jesus Christ, God, looked at the mess. He looked at our messy floors. And he thought, what am I going to do about that? And what he did is when I cleaned my floor, the only way I could make sure our floor, our new floor, was absolutely shiny, absolutely pristine, was to get right down on the floor and literally scrub it. And God looked at us and he sent Jesus Christ, his own son, into this world to walk around it as a human being to literally scrub us. Because the truth is, the wages for sin, the wages for all those things that we have done, it says in the Bible, is death. It's not really right. You've got to agree, it's not really fair that we should get into heaven with being liars, being adulterers, being murderers, not putting other people first, not even believing in God. That can't be right. Scott had to say, unfortunately, the wages for sin, what's the punishment for that is death. So he sent Jesus Christ in the world to die for us. He looked at you. He looked at you with all that mess and said, I love you so much. I want to die for you. I want to take the death that you should have had. And he took all the dirt on your floor and he wiped it all off. So that when God looks at you, he sees you as clean. And he sees you as sparkly. And do you know what's beautiful? What I love about this verse in Romans, it says, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Whilst you were doing that act, whilst you were stealing, whilst you were being adulterous, whilst you were looking at that thing on the future you know you shouldn't have done, whilst you were talking to that person that you knew you shouldn't have been talking to, whilst you were being angry and saying those words that you shouldn't have been saying, whilst you were gossiping behind somebody's back, in that very act, God looked at you and said, you are worth saving. So God sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you, if you believe in him, have everlasting life. And you know what? If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, I'm going to give an opportunity later for you just to know him and to say, Lord, I want you to come and clean my floor, <laughs> and I want you to have a relationship with me. And you know, for the church, for those of us that do know him, it gets a little bit better. Because you know, obviously, to clean our floor, uh, confess a bit more, you'll get to know me a bit more, Johnny and I didn't even have a hoover. <laughs> okay? And Johnny went to somebody's house, and he came back later, and he said, do you know what, Beth? They let me borrow this hoover. I was like, open air, that's great. I can actually clean the floor. Amen. And you know what? A little bit of time went by. They don't know this, but we pretty much filled up that hoover. Sorry, Gary and Tracy. <laughs> and that poor little Hetty hoover is really full to the brim. 
And about a week later, we get a knock on the door and we open up and someone from the church goes, do you know what God told us to buy you a Hoover? God told us to buy you a Hoover. And what I love about this is that God, he didn't just leave us on the earth to live in our mess, but he sent the Holy Spirit to help us. And those of you that know Jesus Christ and have accepted him into your life, that is a beautiful example of listening to the Holy Spirit and following the Holy Spirit's prompting so that when other people's lives get a bit messy, you come in and you help clear it up. And do you know what, church, what I loved about that is that person, when they walked in, they could have gone, your house is filthy. Your house is such a mess. Let me just message someone. Oh, my gosh, I want to go to Johnny and Beth's. Oh, my word, have you seen their dog and all the hair? They didn't do that. There was no judgment whatsoever. There was no condemnation. There was literally just, here, guys, have this hoover. What a beautiful example of what church should be like. What a beautiful example of what listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit should be like. Because church, we need to start doing this a little bit more. Because there are people here with messy situations. There are people here with messy marriages. There are people here with messy children. There are people here with messy drug situations or alcohol situations. There are people here with messy financial situations. And we need to come along without judgment, without condemnation and go, do you know what? Here's a hoover. Let me, as it says in Ephesians 5, imitate Christ as a dearly loved child. And let me imitate him by coming down and helping you scrub that floor. So there's a double whammy here today, really. One, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you know what? All you need to know is that he loves you so much. It doesn't matter whatever you've done. Whilst you are still sinning, whilst you're in the mess, he looks at you and goes, I just want to know you. So much I send my son to die for you, so you can have a relationship with me. And the second thing, those of you that do know him, let's start really listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit so that we can really help clean others up and clean their floors. Will you do me a favor? Will you just close your eyes for me and bow your heads? And you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you've come into church maybe for the first time ever today, And maybe throughout the worship, you felt a bit emotional, you felt a bit hot, you felt a bit um, uncomfortable. I would would actually say that's probably the Holy Spirit just working something on you. Maybe you came in here really doubtful, really like these people are nutters. But if you want to know Jesus Christ this morning, if you get that your life is a bit messy and you need Jesus to help you to clean it up, I just want you to raise your hand now. No one will know. No one will see. Thank you. Thank you. And if you've got questions, I'm just going to go on the Alpha course. For those of you that have raised your hand, I'm just going to pray a really simple prayer. And I just want you to pray in your head as well. It goes, Dear Lord, I'm sorry for the things that I have done. And I ask Jesus Christ into my life to clear them up. And Lord, I want to know you. And from this point forward, I want to follow you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And those church, if you know that you need to listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit a little bit more, then I just want you in this quiet and in this time just to ask the Holy Spirit to show you now anything that you might need to do. We're going to ask for the prophetic right now to give you holy insight into other people in our congregation, to our communities that you might need to help. So, Lord, we just pray upon our congregation, Lord. Lord, we know that there are people out there who are suffering, who are hurting, and, Lord, we need to love them, and we want to love them. So, Lord, give us your holy prophetic insight. Prompt our hearts, Lord Jesus, to know who to go and buy a hoover for, who to go and help. Help us not to be judgmental or or condemn them, Lord, but help us just to love like Jesus loved us. Amen.